The crash on the Athens Stock Exchange this week showed how little confidence investors have in a rapid recovery of the Greek economy. On the other hand, international financial markets were much calmer. There are still few signs of the contagion affecting other members of the Eurozone, but most analysts remain very sceptical about the prospects for a sustainable recovery in Greece. Unfortunately, I think the chances of the third bailout program to putting Greece back on the right track are quite limited. Um, the austerity targets are very ambitious. Uh, the economy is starting from a really bad place um, due to the credit crunch that was created through imposing capital controls. The creditors have probably, to some extent, focused um, only on the symptoms like the high debt, the deficit, the lack of competitiveness. But for me, these are only symptoms of really an underlying malaise that is much deeper uh, ingrained in the political and social system. And um, I think until that is starting to be addressed, we will always struggle. And that, for me, is one of the disappointments with the current Syriza government. Politically, uh, I think Syriza still has some leeway. Uh, the strongest argument Syriza has in its hands is that it, that it is not the previous parties who have governed. And that gives Mr Tsipras, who remains also very popular, some leeway towards doing some things while in power. But I think the ideological DNA, if you like, of the party is completely incompatible with what lies in the bailout uh, agreement. So if previous allegedly, supposedly pro-European governments uh, caught some reform fatigue after a few years uh, in power, the normal thing to, the logical thing is that Syriza, for Syriza this will happen much sooner. If Greece is forced to quit the Eurozone, the consequences are still very unpredictable. Grexit would certainly be no panacea for Athens. Even if Greece hangs on in as a full Eurozone member, pressure for reform will get more urgent. The presidents of the five main institutions in the European Union, including the European Commission and the European Central Bank, have spelt out the path towards a fully-fledged fiscal union. I think what is more doable, in my view, is some sort of insur an insurance mechanism. I'm not sure whether it should be an unemployment insurance or some other form of a limited joint budget that is going to address severe stresses in one country, but is designed as such that you should normally, over the course of a series of business cycles, you should not be neither a net payer or a net recipient. Behind the Greek financial crisis lies a tension between Germany and France on how to manage the common currency. Germany wants strict budget discipline and tight monetary policy. France would be more flexible on both counts and wants a big budget. Sony Kapoor, chief executive of the think tank Redefine, sees that problem as unresolved. Germany has purportedly feared that were there to be a Greek crisis, and especially after President Hollande stepped in, that France would want to rewrite the rules of the Eurozone uh, according to its own grand vision of a union of nation states with more control of the fiscal lever. There is a legitimate German fear that this would mean that France implicitly wants a fiscal subsidy of some kind. The question is, what is the pound of flesh the Germans demand in return? And one hopes that when the dust settles, the rules look a bit more flexible along the lines of what the French want with the centralized fiscal authority, but with enough flexibility to be able to respond to idiosyncratic shocks. Rather than the rigid German rules, economics is not a moral science. They disagree, I think, on what exact steps to take, but I think they all fully agree that more steps need to be taken. Now, they will be working out the details, I think, as they are looking at the proposal made by the five presidents and will probably work through that program starting with the completion of the banking union, the completion of a capital market union, and then gradually move on to various fiscal mechanisms. I don't think Germany and France will ever fully agree on how the Eurozone will be run. It will always be some kind of compromise. And the Greek crisis has shown that the Germans are pushing it relatively far with their rule-based tough approach. 
and uh, they might have to give some concessions to, to the French in terms of how the Eurozone is run in the future. Christian Odendahl is a German economist based in London who is critical of the excessive stress from Berlin on austerity. I think there is a very interesting debate going on in Germany right now about what kind of implications a German leadership role in the Eurozone has. And the Greek crisis has sparked that debate. And there's quite a controversial debate in Germany, some taking the side that Germany was much too harsh and that it should be more uh, subtle in its approach in the Eurozone, and others saying this is the leadership role that we have by default and we need to fill it for the best of the Eurozone. And that debate might play out in, in either direction. I think the whole Germany-Greece thing is very uh, simplistic. The whole view of Greece uh, standing up to Germany or Germany alone dominating the Eurozone is very uh, simplistic. It is important to understand that ahead of the final round of negotiations in July, Greece found itself completely uh, isolated within the Eurogroup. Uh, it found itself de facto outside of the Eurogroup meetings where its future was being uh, decided upon. The end of the Greek financial crisis is still not in sight. Already, pressure is growing for closer integration in the Eurozone. Both France and Germany agree on that. There's going to be ever more of a two-speed Europe with a hardcore focus on the Eurozone and a looser periphery containing the non-members of the single currency like the UK. The one thing we don't know is, will Greece be a member of the hardcore or will they be an outsider? This is Quentin Peel for the Financial Times in London.